Good afternoon. I'm Daniel Miller and this is Destiny Academy. A warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members, participants and viewers worldwide on a variety of different platforms. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for being our very valued community members. Thank you for supporting the channel and most importantly thank you for supporting our fundraising campaign for Mind UK or I should say Mind Charity UK, the charity that we are presently supporting here on the channel with our charitable fundraising and publicity. How is everybody doing today? How are you? What's going on? Uh, are you uh, perhaps enjoying the hot weather, which is yet again in England as hot as we do not want it to be? I've got to tell you, uh, yesterday uh, I, I had quite a pleasant day. It wasn't really that hot in here. And on the night before, we had quite a bit of rain. So it was very nice and refreshing. It was very easy to sleep and everything. But last night, uh, at, a, at about, I thought it was about midnight, there were some serious showers. There was a major downpour for about 10 minutes. And that was it. Ten minutes. I just made everything so damp and so humid and so hot as well. The rain was not particularly cool. <laughs> it was like hot rain, tropical style. And yet again, we are back to high 20s. Uh, and it's just very, very hot. That's, that's all there is. At least, I guess, that humidity that I suffered from for about a week is no longer here but it makes it very difficult to do anything indoors you know it's much easier if you stroll and then have your phone and your stream so you're walking through your town and well we can't really do this uh, with Destiny I'm afraid we've got to be here on our setup and uh, that makes it really really difficult. Um, are you playing any of the demos we talked about yesterday? Is anyone uh, having a look at that uh, um, and considering whether to approach any of these games? Um, I spent quite some time yesterday looking at the stream, st stream Steam Festival that kicked off yesterday and it will carry on until next Monday I believe and uh, uh, I really have to say I was completely snowed under by the number of titles that are on offer and for the vast majority of these titles I never heard anything of um, you know story wise or release wise or anything else and it's just simply like like an avalanche of so many different games and they're beautifully presented you have um, a very nice uh, uh, layout to which well similar to what you had previously on Steam you can easily access all the information most importantly you can watch trailers and interestingly enough uh, last night at around midnight they were running back-to-back -back streams so all the developers were doing their 24-7 uh, streams introducing the games and trying to really bring in as many people as possible to try them and uh, you know I was, that, was, that was interesting I actually couldn't, couldn't decide on what more to see and what to watch it was that decision making paralysis that they described yesterday in uh, Eurogamer and I just very strongly felt I had to be following uh, some sort of guidelines in here and I think I will resort to what Eurogamer and Games Radar suggested just to try out some of these. I mean I, there are about two or three that I spotted straight away that caught my eye and certainly are of my interest but just to put it in perspective um, if you're a console gamer uh, you will not be able to access this because this is to do with PC gaming and some of the games are going to be released across the platforms so it's like for any platform that you have and uh, the other ones are specifically for PCs and uh, you would need to download uh, the, the uh, Steam app to your mobile or to your um, laptop or PC and then you can access basically sign up and access all the information everything is for free all the demos don't have to pay for and the quantity of titles is certainly in a great abundance I, I've got to say I 
I thought when Jeff offered, was it 50 or 100? I think it was 50 um, in 2020 when he was uh, doing his first um, Summer Games Festival session and he was doing it from his flat because obviously we suffered from uh, the pandemic and the lockdown was imposed everywhere. I thought like 50 demos that was, or was it 100? I can't remember really. I, you know, I have to look it up um, and find the correct details in my diary. But I think these ones are exceeding the number of 100 from what, I, what I've seen yesterday. The demos and the titles just kept coming and it just seemed to me like quite a, quite a great number of all sorts of uh, games on offer. I've got to say, when you look at the indie games, there are so many that indeed are giving us a variety of different activities, um, fantastically designed open worlds, many different um, interesting stories, and you know it's just it's just very hard to choose. Also, it's the time factor. Uh, the difficulty I have with that festival is, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of trying to uh, draw as much attention as possible. Uh, is to do with the timing. They have time limit on the demos. So some of the demos will be accessible after the 26th of June, but actually the vast majority will will no longer be accessible. So, uh, you know, you've got to be um, trying out as many as possible for as little time as possible to get the flavor. And that really possibly will defeat the purpose of being able to uh, understand what the game was actually about. And uh, think uh, from what I've seen, there are quite a variety of different titles spread across all kinds of genres. So, you know, if you are an open world person, you could just step in and a dozen of those. If you're shooting quite a few of these games, you have um, it's, it's all sorts really um, action RPG, you name it. And uh, I really spent quite a bit of time yesterday looking at it, and time just flew by, you know. I, I was uh, uh, exploring uh, Steam and things on offer uh, on a laptop and suddenly it was already 2 o'clock in the morning so oh god the time's gone by so quickly one game that I really enjoyed and that I'm very interested in and obviously caught my eye uh, during the showcase last two weeks ago or 10 days ago in fact uh, the uh, uh, Summer Game Festival uh, showcase events was Lies of P and yesterday as I logged in they were doing uh, their live presentation on the game and they were doing some gameplay so that was very interesting <clears throat> I've got to say I, I'm very hesitant to watch many um, developers uh, presenting the gameplay because the way I feel is it spoils my enjoyment of actually finding out for myself entering the game for the first time so I'm quite happy to watch trailers but the actual gameplay I don't want to say that because it could be prejudicial and also you know when you when you log in or you load the game the game starts first of all with credits and then with trailers and you know with, with everything but you have prologue and you sort of soak up the atmosphere you get to know the story you, you get in and you um, become really uh, an integral part of that world that is spoiled for me if I watch a lot of gameplay I think considering uh, a, a festival like the one we just had with all different types of games introduced I'll just forget about it you know I'll see some of it and then in any case within the festival the gameplay will not be very extensive it'll be probably approximately 10 to 15 minutes long uh, so that's really not all that much and you'll get some some ideas on what the game's like but if you were to be doing a proper developer introduction they could be doing something like you know a couple of hours of the game and that really is definitely not for me anyway um, for all of our friends who are just joining us and watching thank you for joining uh, we are going to be um, the usual thing here it's destiny academy we talk about video games we talk about destiny we talk about everything that's happening in the industry we talk about uh, various um, issues that are concerning our communities and we're socially aware and we are fundraising at the moment for mind mind is our uk based charity that helps people who are experiencing uh, mental health issues or any other uh, difficulties related to their emotional health and um, we are trying to raise one thousand pounds um, by the end of this year, we have milestones, we have targets, we have various other community-based events attached to this, as well as quizzes, prizes and everything. So if you're interested, just step in. The links are up there. Click on the link, have a look and let me know what you think. You get all the information on uh, the fundraiser, on the charity, on Tiltify, the platform that is making it possible. And you can also watch the stream there. So, you know, it's all, all very compact, very easily 
<coughs> accessible for everyone and indeed very very user friendly. Coming back to what I was describing, Steam Festival is up and running until the 26th of June so certainly I'm highly recommending it to everyone and definitely explore the titles, find out something that is of your, uh, of your interest and make sure that you are also after playing this demo and exploring the worlds that the developers have given you make sure you contact them and tell them what you thought or participate on Reddit because there are dedicated threads there from the developers uh, with every one of these games and you can then be telling them about your pros and cons, what you liked and most important what you did not like. That is very important because the developers want to know what you find tricky and they want to make sure that every game is as user friendly uh, as possible and indeed providing entertainment and content that will be enjoyable for all the gamers. So make sure you write and you talk. You can talk in various forums, live, you can talk here, you can talk on Instagram or Facebook or Discord. And also when you write, just make sure you are um, concise, crisp, you know, don't rant, just provide sentences that describing exactly what your experience was. And as I said, always tell them pros and cons, tell them what you liked, but they will be always more interested in what you did not like, because they want to eliminate as much of that as possible. Most of the times you will get uh, with the AAA blockbusters, uh, many people being concerned about two or three different things. I mean, one of them is certainly, just bear with me, I don't know what's going on here, I'm certainly getting some pop-ups which I do not want to see. Yeah. Uh, and what's this? Hang on. I do apologize. I'm suddenly getting uh, some pop ups on my stream. I don't know whether you can see that as well. Anyway, uh, what I was describing is um, uh, the whole story about providing the feedback. Uh, very important to be able to uh, um, describe what people disliked and many community members will be frequently, if looking at AAA blockbusters, resorting to complaints about monetization, which is obvious and I think yesterday we talked about this quite a bit. Well, we have quite a variety of different games on offer at present and um, they vary from the games that are offered totally free of charge, the games like Apex and Warzone, and those like Destiny that you have to pay for and you pay for the DLCs, you pay for uh, seasonal content and um, the minds of the gamers are very much divided there, you know. There are people who are very concerned that, for instance, Bungie are aggressively attempting to monetize at present because obviously they have some shortfall uh, on, uh, on the sales front and uh, um, that's just being seen as completely unacceptable and I, I agree I think some of the things I've seen like for instance purchasing these dungeon keys and it's just not on because you, you bought the DLC you bought uh, the uh, seasonal content and all of that needs to be fully integrated I'm quite happy for people to purchase uh, various um, treasure packs cosmetics and everything which is an offer that does not have any implication for the way you play the game and it will not allow anyone to level up or you know go forward but we've seen that with seasonal content of allowing people to be purchasing uh, the ranks and I've got to say ranking up is extremely expensive so I that person would never ever do it maybe if I fell behind and if I couldn't complete like 100 uh, of those ranks maybe for the last couple and when you have like 10 minutes you know like uh, uh, the last five minutes left of the season and then then you would just curse itself into doing it but not not otherwise definitely would not be my sort of thing and uh, uh, we have uh, um, <clears throat> therefore a lot of dissatisfaction being expressed in there on the other hand you get people complaining about apex apex obviously you can purchase uh, the seasons but uh, seasonal content the vast majority of it is free the game is free well I mean Respawn have got to be able to make money somewhere I guess what I'm trying to describe is the difference between a game that's in any case being sold you already pay for the game for the DLCs for everything else that comes together with it inclusive of the seasonal content and yet again there's more monetization now that is unacceptable that is just something that everybody's going to be hating uh, in those tiny indie games 
that they're offering through Steam, you're not going to be finding any of this. So you can tell them about the graphics, about the gameplay, about the overall engagement with the story, with the activity, and you know anything else which you felt and experienced. I've got to say the um, magnitude of that Steam Festival is mind-boggling. I was really surprised with the number of live streams yesterday coming from every one of those developers. It was it was incredible, and you had timetable with the hours indicating that some of them are doing it at the same time. So similar to what you have at the major conventions, you know, showcase events where five events are taking place at one o'clock at the same time, and you're not, they're not sure which one you would like to watch. Don't forget. The vast majority of these um, presentations uh, are accessible through YouTube and elsewhere, so you will be able to, to watch them in separation if you're missing out on a particular title. Uh, but uh, uh, definitely a, a fantastic, fantastic festival. Very glad to have looked at it and very glad to receive the information well in advance telling me what was of interest. And in fact, we can look at this more or less straight away as we are talking about the news and Steam Festival. So just bear with me. Uh, we are going to be um, having a quick look. I uh, need to dig up all the information I have uh, there on my Twitter. Once again, for all of you who are uh, my followers and readers, make sure that you always go to my Twitter, hit that button follow, because Twitter is the hub that I use for the news. So what I talk about usually here at the beginning of the stream is all based on the information that would have been uh, accessing earlier in the day. So when I wake up, the first thing I do is I, you know, like the, like like in the old days, uh, what you do is you, you go and buy a newspaper. You have the newspaper delivered to your home. You pick up the newspaper and then you read everything kind of back to back um, to find out what's going on in the world. Well, these days are long gone. They're not coming back. We've got everything now accessible on our digital platforms. And we do exactly that through Twitter or any other online hub giving us the news. I've got quite a big list of um, hubs that I'm using for news feeds. So I go through that and then I kind of select and curate those news which I consider to be interesting to myself, first of all, and then to our community. Because evidently, um, in that ocean of information, it's hard to know what to read. And similar to what I said about Steam Festival yesterday, it just it seems like a massive big festival and with so many different titles and uh, you've got to have some sort of guide, hence the guides on the internet and people run their Twitch channels or YouTube reviews, previews, uh, uh, intros, etc. Because, you know, they will be examining uh, the ocean of information and they will be coming up with something which is um, giving you some pointers, giving you some ideas on what can be done in order for the activity to be seen as more enjoyable. So let me just have a look. I've got uh, um, Yesterday I was giving you some information that was uh, presented by Eurogamer and they had a list of about 15, I think, games that looked really interesting. A certain single out, uh, Don't Nod game, that was introduced also by um, one of the big presentations during the uh, uh, Summer Game Festival weekend. It's called Joson and that will be Justin in uh, English and uh, uh, really it does look like a, you know, a proper big, uh, uh, very interesting um, don't not game and you've seen with don't, uh, don't not they have like two different types of uh, uh, games that they offer one is similar to life is strange um, a game that is based on a story and does have lots of different situations through which you need to take certain decisions that will have consequence later <clears throat> in the game and uh, uh, usually um, beautiful cinematic visuals and a great narrative and everything else. If you played Life is Strange then you're not exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the other games are similar to Vampire so they will be a bit different. They'll have a good story but visually they will not be um, presented in the same format and I think uh, uh, Jassant or Jason, I don't know how to pronounce that to be honest, Jason, I think it, it is, uh, is a bit like that. It looked really beautiful and I'm very, very excited and the demo is, I think, out. So, let me see what Games Radar told us that we should be watching and playing uh, on the, uh, through the fest, through the um, Steam Festival. And uh, like I said, the celebration of those games is going to be carry on until the June the 26th. And, uh, I've, I mean, has anyone looked at it? Have you tried it? You, you've seen any of the games? As I said, quite a number of these games will be on PCs, but 
but there are also the games that are cross-platform and that will be released on PlayStation and Xbox. So definitely worth checking out. And as I said, some of the demos are not going to be playable after the 26th, but then obviously the other ones, indeed, you will find elsewhere. And I think maybe it is also a, um, you know, it's a sort of marketing trick. They want people to hammer the demos as much as possible during the week and then eventually they just release all of them in order to um, uh, bring in <coughs> extra views and, and, and players, which is usually the case. But I, I find it to be a bit stressful if you've got more than 100 and you need to try out every one of them. Obviously, if you're a, a collector, a completionist, but that is almost like an impossible task. They said if you were to do that, you would need to spend no, no longer than 12 minutes per game. And 12 minutes per game is certainly not long enough. So it did kick off on June the 19th, so that was on Monday, and it will conclude exactly a week later. So they said you can play as many free demos as you can manage, you can watch developer live streams, uh, you can get your favorite games added to a wish list to be notified when each releases, which is what I've done yesterday. Um, it will take you quite a bit of time uh, before the big breakouts of Steam Next Fest emerge. There are really quite a few participating titles that, for instance, Games Radar has been uh, keeping a close eye on for some time now, and that really includes myself as well. I've, I've singled out some titles a little while back, and uh, so let's see what they say. The well, surprise, surprise, the first big game they're recommending is the game that I spotted also during the. Um, uh, I think it was was it was it uh, uh, Jeff's or was it? I think it was Jeff's. No, it wasn't actually. Was it? Was it Xbox? I can't now remember, in one of the presentations there was uh, Eliza P and Eliza P definitely grabbed me, I've not heard of the game before and uh, the, the, its visuals and the stories seem like really amazing and I watched a bit, a bit, about 10 minutes of the developer introduction yesterday and I thought, well that was really jaw dropping, I really want to be playing this game as soon as possible shame on me, I've not downloaded the demo, the demo was already made accessible more than a week ago and um, I need to double check uh, <laughs> to make sure that the demo is going to be indeed available uh, all the way up to the time when the game is going to be released because otherwise I'll miss out on it and I don't want to do that, I want to retry the demo. So that's the first game that they're recommending and uh, they said it's one of the biggest breakouts of the year and its developer Neowiz they released um, a demo for this which looks a bit like Souls and uh, um, that came out after the Summer Game Festival and there is obviously an opportunity that attracted over 1 million downloads and counting. I'm not surprised. It just looked incredible. It looked, you know, it did have the aura of Souls and maybe um, Plague Tale because it's happening in medieval France and uh, it, it, you know, it, it looked mysterious, it looked beautiful, it looked story-driven. So anyone who likes RPGs and adventure games will, will jump in straight away. So no wonder. And uh, they said that this, this game charts Pinocchio's attempt to locate his creator, Mr. Geppetto, in the darkly elegant city of Krat. Well, that's news to me. I've heard a bit about Pinocchio and Geppetto, but I didn't realise that they were the the key characters in, in the game and uh, Lies of P I guess will be referring to Lies of Pinocchio right you learn something every day <laughs> it's it's news for me and I probably should have picked it up earlier because I'm, I'm certain they talked about it and um, the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood well I have to tell you that game I have not seen, although I thought I've gone through the entire list yesterday and the list seemed infinite and I've not spotted it either on other hubs uh, like Eurogamer or GameRant and they, they both talked um, uh, about the Steam Festival so and they said we have an early look of the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood um, well, actually, they already looked at it in April and they were really sort of immediately taken aback by its evocative art style, spiritual setting, thought provoking narrative themes. Um, and as a fortune teller witch living in exile, you need to craft your own tar tarot deck and use it to commune with dark forces. Well, you know, that's, that's obviously very appealing. A bit like a card game, but within some sort of spiritual, mythical, mystical type of environment. Looking good. War Groove. Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp released earlier this year. 
leaving developer Chucklefish in an interesting position. So where the original war group was a love letter to a long dormant turn-based strategy series, its sequel arrives in an environment where Nintendo is back leading the charge. More vibrant art style. I have to say that some of the old style 1990s games, you know, don't really immediately appeal to me. I don't know why, they just don't, but that's a completely different mindset, a uh, completely wrong mindset, I should say, because um, some of these games are truly amazing. They really have an unbelievable amount of content, they're really entertaining and funny, and uh, uh, usually when I see them, I say, ah, oh, I don't want to play this. But Xbox Game Pass had, I guess, pointed out some of these games, and because I use Microsoft Rewards Points frequently, they introduce them through they, you know, the app, and then I have a look at the trailer, Go in the game, have a look at it, and I've got to tell you that some of them were really surprising, and they were really enjoyable, and many of them are really platformers or you know the, the old style sort of pixelated types of games. But um, it's all about the content, it's all about the graphics. I'm a bit biased, I'd say. I really adore very high quality graphics. I like watching them on a very good setup, like for instance what I've got here um, with 16 inch screen, Sony Bravia, and then you know, top-notch consoles and um, the rest of the gear, because it's all about the experience, being immersive, being um, a bit like an IMAX. You want to be fully part of that world. And I have said that as a stream Destiny now on PlayStation 4, due to um, the glitch on that Switch app that is affecting Xbox, which we cannot repair, um, I can see the difference. The difference is incredible, you know? You, you stream, for instance, Destiny 2 on PlayStation 4, and then you switch later on, uh, to Series S and the quality of the graphics and the, the experience with the sound and everything else is just on a different level. So, you know, that's, that's basically the way the games are today. But Wargroove will be of interest to very many and indeed uh, the guys from Games Radar are recommending it. Viewfinder is the other. They said this was one of the most compelling uh, uh, games conceptually and uh, uh, they combine the influences of Portal and what remains of Edith Finch. I played both games, they're terrific games, and um, I think what remains of Edith Finch was very popular on PlayStation a little while back as it was offered through the uh, um, uh, PS Now services and uh, certainly a great game, everyone needs to try it. So if you find that it's just like that, then obviously we are going to be very very happy. Leica, Age Through Blood but this thing is, all the games they're suggesting here are distinctly different to the ones I told you about yesterday. So it, it gives you yet another lot of titles, more food for thought for you to decide on what you actually want to be trying uh, during the festival. And I certainly recommend everyone to try as many as possible uh, because that will benefit the developers, it will benefit yourselves because you will get some brownie points from Steam and from the developers. And uh, you know, just just seems like a, like, like a good thing to do. It's summer, and instead of playing golf or doing, you know, water polo or doing swimming, etc., you can sometimes in the evenings resort to uh, these sorts of activities. And um, let's see, we have Leica. Age of Blood was re um, revealed at the Future Game Show. Well, that I, I missed it actually. That must have been part of that uh, ID presentation. And um, they said that they really loved the style and they said the Western inspired. Uh, Metro Duania, Metro Duania, and uh, um, they said that it was very immersive, resembled a mashup of Dead Cells, Roller Dome, and Trials. Well, definitely very, very appealing. Warhaven, I did see yesterday, and that seems like a PvP focused fantasy combat game. So, if you are into Warzone and PUBG and Apex, you're definitely going to like it. And definitely make sure you have a look because I, I believe it is still being worked on and because it's a PvP game you may have some server issues so you've got to be buying it and then telling the developer if any of these issues have been encountered. Um, sea of Stars again a very very good game um, brings back the memories of Golden Sun on Game Boy, uh, game Boy Advance and um, basically they're saying that the, the game will be launching in August and it has absolutely amazing soundtrack. Yeah I mean, I agree. I've, I've looked at it yesterday and, again, similar to the games from, I guess, the 90s, the late 90s, but seemed like really good fun. The game that grabbed me, I immediately placed it on uh, my wish list, is the game called The Invincible. And this game is, I guess, an indie take on Starfield. And um, 
No Man's Sky. It just very similar. You have a couple of guys that are exploring planets and uh, immediately they also made a reference in here. I won't lie, it was looking like Starfield um, may have a stranglehold on science fiction adventure this year. And uh, the fact is that um, you just get the same sort of aura. Obviously the differences in the budget, the game will have different types of uh, activities for you and um, I guess any game coming out that will have a couple of astronauts exploring the universe will be <clears throat> referenced to Starfield for the obvious reasons and uh, it looked very good. The music was very good and I also watched a bit of uh, developer introduction, their kind of gameplay. Uh, it looked very very appetizing so I'm very interested and very much interested in trying it and uh, they said that this um, demo which is very short will introduce you to the planet of Regis 3 and it's incredibly stunning horizons and then uh, you'll have a small taste of the science fiction driven philosophical story that underpins this weird ambitious and experimental first person adventure. I think what they've written about it is just what I experienced as well. I thought um, the game was really bringing in something philosophical, something spiritual, something explorative and uh, um, it was just instant, you know. As soon as I looked at it, I thought, oh, this is, this is amazing. This this looks like a really good game. And um, it will be released at some point in 2023, but they've not really given us the date yet. If you like music, and if you've watched, <coughs> excuse me, if you've watched uh, Xbox, uh, this week on Xbox, you would have seen the trailers or the clips for this game, Goodbye Volcano High and uh, um, you can enter the demo and play it today. It's a narrative adventure that is steadily gathering a lot of buzz around it. Developer Kea Op was recently awarded the Tribeca Games Award on the strength of its recent showing and quite frankly um, you have a group of friends in there trying to make the most of their final year of high school. Uh, Goodbye Volcano High has got a lot of potential and absolutely I just thought that the characters looked so hilarious. They reminded me of the guys from Apex, and the game does not have any resemblance with Apex, but it's just the humor. You know, it's the way they came across, and uh, uh, they're just absolutely uh, hilarious. And also, they come across as uh, characters from a cartoon or an animated film, and they all kind of try to make the best of what they can do for the uh, high, uh, for, for the prom. So it's music, it's fun, it, it just it seems like a very, very enjoyable game and I definitely want to play it, De definitely want to play the demo. Stray Gods, the role-play musical. Again, that's doing some, uh, the game's doing something different. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the game because I've heard a bit about it uh, previously uh, because the um, former Bioware narrative designer, one of the best people at Bioware who worked on all of the projects, David Gader, uh, runs a company called um, what is it called? And, uh, Summerfall Studios and the, he, he will release this game on um, August the 3rd of this year. So what they do is they're combining Greek mythology, contemporary musical theatre and the interaction inherent to the video game medium to create something that, that truly has to be played to be appreciated. So it's a very weird mixture of things you do not expect in that sort of game but at the same time, it brings brings us back to the world of Bioware, you know, the mythical, complex worlds of Dragon Age, of Mass Effect, of Neverwinter, of Jade Empire, of the Knights of the Old Republic. Obviously, they live in a different format here, but the complexity and the ambition is something that definitely draws me to the game. So, another one to watch, for, uh, watch out for. Um, Broken Roads, we have, they've got loads of loads of games in here. Broken Roads is another one. Then we have House Flipper 2, Venba. Well, Venba caught my eye because this is quite short. They said short and sweet, but it's also a great chance um, at getting a flavor of what this narrative cooking game will deliver when it launches next month. You probably played Overcooked and the game is hilarious and highly entertaining. It's a proper family game if you want to have a lot of excitement and buzz within your own uh, family environment and I think this game is going to be very similar albeit a bit shorter and uh, uh, the um, the title Venba relates to the main character and this is somebody who uh, migrates to Canada from India in the 80s and then you are going to be cooking various Indian dishes and introducing them to different family members and friends so um, you know 
it will be very very funny very entertaining and guess what it's going to be like a to z how to cook some of these meals you actually learn something that's playing so definitely you want to make like a good chicken tikka masala or curry i think probably or biryani which is what i eat frequently uh you are going to be getting that in the game so definitely definitely worth a shot paleo pines big little city big kitty little city um, oh that's the last one well we come to the end it's just like literally one run down on one list and taking so long with so many different games my head's spinning just after reading this and yesterday i gave you another list of about 10 15 games so you know what what, what, what are we going to play first um they, they described that yesterday as that uh, that's a beautiful phrase something about decision making paralysis uh but i i forgot I forgot now the phrase. Unfortunately, I've got to write it down somewhere. It was so good. It was uh, it was written by one of the uh, Eurogamer guys, and that's the biggest problem for, uh, I guess, the gamers and reviewers alike. With so many titles coming our, our way and um, not being able to decide on what to, what to play next. Big Kitty Little City is funny, and you actually will find out what the game is about just by thinking about the title. So you're just a little black cat trying to get home. But on the way, you're going to use the city as your playground. You steal things, you mess with everything, um, annoy different people, wear ridiculous hats, and you can also make friends with other animals. So it's similar to Stray, but um, it is having more emphasis on doing something silly rather than um, elements connected to kind of sci-fi opera. Right, so that's all about Steam Festival, which is currently up and running and hope that our friends are going to be finding it as interesting as myself. I certainly uh, find the titles exciting. I mean, it's just, it's not titles, it's more to do with the whole event. And I think in the course of this year, we are having that very many different types of showcase events, introducing us to many different games and activities online. And uh, um, there has been a rule uh, created in media that 2020 year will be getting no big games, that triple blockbusters are still simmering somewhere and we'll be getting just small titles and we'll be totally bored. I think that's just complete misconception, utter nonsense. I don't know where it's coming from. We have so many different titles to engage with on so many different platforms. We do not have to be playing always triple blockbusters. Remember that. The games like Destiny or Starfield, they take many years to make and they will attract obviously very many global gamers and customers instantly but there are so many different studios producing wonderful little titles that are offered to these small showcase events or the festivals like the one that Steam's running at the moment and please make sure you pay attention to some of these as well. Right, a lot more news to uh, get through so I better crack on. Uh, the uh, um, trailer we watched uh, during the uh, um, presentation uh, Jeff, Jeff Keeley's and uh, Summer Game Festival presentation, uh, presentations, I should say in plural, was uh, the one related to Fallout 76 and they talked about two different DLCs to come out. One is Atlantic City, that will come out later in the year, and the other, called Once in a Blue Moon, uh, was more or less imminent and it came out yesterday. So if you are a Fallout gamer, if you uh, enjoy the wonderful Bethesda survival world, uh, then crack on, have a look, enjoy it. It's out now, so you have new public events, you have a Hollywood themed season, and various other things in there. Obviously, many, many cosmetics and many different things which you can either collect or purchase as you go along. Um, the biggest thing, in addition to uh, the Steam Festival, is the PlayStation Plus celebrations, and uh, they have the new. It's also a week-long festival of PlayStation with lots of different games and things on offer. So if you're interested, you can just crack on and download and play and you will basically get lots of rewards as you're doing it. So I'll tell you a bit about it. And you can access new blockbuster games. You can go through competition in order to win a PS5 and PS uh, virtual reality headset. You can instantly, just by subscribing to... Um, well, I'm not, not sure really what the subscription is for, but it, the, the, there is, well, you need to access the section that will give you PlayStation Network avatars. And these avatars are beautiful. 
they're specially designed and customized for this event and you will get to think about half a dozen of them and you'll be able to use them on your um, mobile and your PC. I'm not sure whether you can import them to PlayStation, possibly. I've, I've not really uh, found a way to do it as yet, but uh, they're absolutely fantastic. So make sure you download them if you are on PlayStation. Then you have some extra downloadable wallpaper, which you can use as well on your PC and mobile phone. You will get some PlayStation Stars challenges, which will provide you with some rewards. You will have a Sackboy speedrun tournament, again, if you are successful you'll be getting some rewards and then for anyone who is not a subscriber to PlayStation Plus they'll get an online multiplayer free weekend which is the one uh, that is ahead of us so these are the extras and uh, the advantages of being an active participant the festival will run until next Monday I think let me just see the days oh no it's actually uh, that's not corrected it's for 10 days so it's between the 20th and the 30th it ends on the 30th of June and uh, you can actively participate at any time you know don't bother uh, with specific sections so software just jump in try out different games and follow the instructions which you'll get on the app they're inviting you to join and then they'll tell you what you can be doing I think one of the things that I uh, quite liked was that quiz and uh, they've given you five questions but the last question was utterly ridiculous they uh, you couldn't really um, guess the answer properly the question in uh, 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 you know the, the, they put in there question number five and it's been a big debate on reddit and twitter about it is um, how many hours did people spend uh, doing the multiplayers within the last year well it's not possible to know is it because all the multiplayers will buy it it's just crazy I don't know whether there are any accurate stats but that that was a tricky question apparently question number five that um, will decide whether you are going to be then um, thrown into the uh, uh, the uh, um, you know the, the the prize winning contest for PlayStation Five and for that virtual reality set. I don't know; it's, it's hard to tell. But I've put a number in there which I think is perhaps relevant. I think put down something like 13 million hours or something. Like that. Let's see whether I'm close to the actual number. Uh, the other thing that they introduced is quite a number of new games. One of which is Far Cry Six and uh, these are instantly accessible through uh, PlayStation Plus services as of yesterday and um, you know what to say it's just a wonderful wonderful Ubisoft game uh, make sure that you are stepping in and trying it I played it already quite a bit on Xbox they've had several about two or three freebie weekends during the last couple of years and um, the game's amazing it's just literally following the trail of all the other Far Cry um, installments and uh, um, you have uh, this revolutionary who's fighting against the uh, dictator, the president of an imaginary state, and plenty of things to do, plenty of things to uh, complete, many adventures to be encountered. Great fun. Always best played together with other people as well. So uh, we have then new to game catalog. I'll tell you what the games are. They have uh, um, Far Cry 6. Turtles, Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, Rogue Legacy 2, Inscription, Solstice, Deus Ex. Well, Deus Ex is a great game and they're offering it um, on its top-notch edition. So definitely worth a shot. Killing Floor 2, Downhill, and we are back to Far Cry. So really about 7 or 8 games have been added uh, and... Um, no, I'm actually quite wrong. They added more than seven games. These ones are just simply highlighted. And for anyone who wants to be participating um, in the festival that PlayStation is concurrently running together with Steam, obviously on separate platform for different reasons, you can do so today. So I'm just looking at these at this avatars. They're really good. You have Uncharted Legacy of Thieves, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Kenner, Bridge of Spirits, Cheer, and then you have the last one, Horizon Forbidden West, and they look so beautiful. They're, you know, customized, properly designed for um, your um, phone or or um... no, actually, I'm wrong. It does say it's PSN avatar for PS Plus, so probably we are going to be able to use them on our PlayStation in addition to everything else. So that's pretty good. Uh, download a free PlayStation Plus wallpaper. The wallpaper, I have to say, does not really appeal to me. It, it, it's a bit strange and it's sort of combining different images from their exclusives 
but it doesn't doesn't really grab me i've got to admit um not being anesthetic critical but i don't really want that to be on my um laptop for instance or my computer screen it just just doesn't you know doesn't appeal for whatever reason the color wise is a bit strange and then uh, as i said competing in a tournament earn exclusive playstation stars collectibles well i'm quite curious about this take part in a season in a series of special playstation stars campaigns on the playstation app from june the 20th to june the 30th and simply start and complete the campaigns uh, which then will be giving you these rewards so you have game catalog playing one of these games that have made the first year of the game catalog so special so the games are final fantasy 7 remake demon souls yakuza kiwami uncharted legacy of thieves collection or assassin's creed the enzia collection and then you have the other one which is um, the playstation plus selection game trials you can try some of these hogwarts legacy well i want to try that actually i've watched quite a few trailers on xbox and um, the game definitely looked very interesting uh, god of war ragnarok mlb the show 23 the last of us part one or dying light to stay human well i've tried that one as well i've got to say i quite liked uh, some of the stuff i've seen i'm not really a huge fan of horror games but you know it, it just seemed like an interesting game fairly cinematic and unnecessarily brutal i've got to say a bit like mortal kombat the 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 the, uh, the new one i can't understand the reason for that incredible brutality that we are witnessing in there in that mortal kombat trailer there was uh, one of the characters using like circular saws as a weapon and the other guy just got literally uh, sliced up into bits and you know i'm not keen on that i don't know there are obviously gamers that are quite keen on that sort of gore not for me i think it's unnecessary and i think the game is good as it is without it and then we have the last bit which is the classics catalog i mean just to put in perspective the reason they're running this festival is they're celebrating one year of the new playstation plus systems which have been introduced in order to substitute the previous streaming services and they have been uh, upgraded with better tech upgraded with more titles with different categories and obviously with a different price which have not been popular i've got to admit but uh, the services that's offered today are competitive and they are certainly um, shoulder to shoulder with what we've seen with xbox there are similarities and differences the similarities are in terms of both of these platforms rotating certain games uh, the differences are that playstation is not offering you the exclusives on day one so you know they can choose basically but you know the exclusives do come to the platform stay there for some time and as i said maybe at a later date but still, the vast majority of these exclusives are accessible through playstation albeit not the recent ones so the classic the classics catalog does have legend of uh, of dragoon disney pixar toy story 3 jack and daxter uh the precursor legacy or bioshock remastered there's been a lot of talk about um clockwork uh, clockwork revolution and whether it is going to be resembling bioshock so we are being kept in suspense no one said either yes or no and uh, we are simply toying with the idea that perhaps it will be like Bioshock but within a different environment with a different story with different characters uh, definitely suspenseful and I'm, I'm in I'm definitely interested in it okay so you have also that free multiplayer weekend if you are not a subscriber like myself make sure you step in play wars on a FIFA or any of the of these games and then as I said plenty of those to try on the trial you have the uh, classics catalog updates you know it just the list goes on and on but anyway without actually going on deeper uh, uh, about the um playstation plus celebration just step in try out different games uh, i highly recommend you to try game trials because you will find lots of games that are extremely expensive still and easily accessible and you will get a few hours of that freebie so why not try it i mean i tried for instance uh, cyberpunk uh, previously and um, i think the game about five hours which was good enough sufficient enough for me to explore the first section of the game and I, I loved it but i've seen that they reduced the number of hours for some of the games that are very very popular so instead of offering five to seven hours they're offering like one to two hours and i've got to say the one hour for a game is ridiculously low it's just not enough and uh, you'll just do a bit of customization and then i guess if you just leave everything on autopilot 
you'll be able to try the prologue or something right at the beginning of the game, but one hour is just, just too short. But the list is very lengthy. You're getting very many games that, which you can try, and uh, it is a very, very good way through which you can um, experience the game firsthand um, outside of the kind of beta stroke demo equation. Right, so that's all about PlayStation. Let's have a look what we have here with the Game Pass, which is obviously the PlayStation competitor. Uh, we have a number of games coming out within the next two weeks. So first of all, one of the heavy weights is coming out on June the 22nd, which I believe is tomorrow. So um, tomorrow we are going to have Need for Speed Unbound released and The Book Walker. So if you are a person who likes driving games, that's going to be definitely your bread and butter. Make sure you preload and they can crack on tomorrow straight away. Then you have the book walker and let me just see the book walker. Curious about it. Where is it? Yeah, they've not put it on, on the... Um, on the animations in there, so uh, I haven't got it. I uh, uh, won't be able to tell you more about it. We need to double check. June 27th is Bramble, the Mountain King, and then you have Fist Forged in Shadow Torch. Well, that's a very good game. That is definitely uh, a game that everyone is very excited about. And just as I said earlier, um, just preload and you'll be able to um, access it free of charge on the Game Pass. So then, then we have on the June 27th, 29th. Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, and that is a very, very enjoyable family family game. And uh, then we have also July the 3rd, Arcade Paradise, and then we have July the 5th, Sword and Fairy Together Forever. So there's been a complaint amongst the subscribers that uh, Game Pass, certainly in the course of this year, is lagging on the heavyweights front. But I don't agree with this. We do not have to be having heavyweights at all times. These games are delightful and I think the Xbox team really wants people to get to know more of these indie titles and play them as much as possible because otherwise it becomes like a one big monopoly. Uh, there has been a lot of debate on Microsoft in recent months, probably within the last year, about that Activision Blizzard merger and they're facing huge obstacles because lots of people think in the industry that they just want to be uh, grabbing whatever is good out there due to the un almost limitless amount of revenue that they have in their possession and then uh, they want to be dominating the market. Um, to be fair, part of that statement appears to be true but on the other hand I also feel that the present team that works for Xbox is doing everything possible to uh, provide certain platforms for uh, small developers to become recognized, to be marketed and introduced to games around the world. And also they want people who are gamers to try different uh, different titles instead of just resorting to global uh, multi-million marketing campaigns. Because if, if you, for instance, uh, um, go to cinema or you walk around town or you switch on your mobile phone, guess what? It's going to be Apex and Warzone adverts coming your way. And Warzone in particular, it's huge domination and uh, you know the games like the one I mentioned earlier that's offered through Steam Festival, can't remember the title now, it's, it's War something, um, will not be immediately noticed but we do want people to play these games as well. So I don't necessarily agree with it. I think there are pros and cons when it comes to these merge deals and you have seen that with some of the developers that are now part of um, the uh, Xbox uh, Game Studios umbrella group. Uh, most notably um, Obsidian, they still produce high quality games and have a certain degree of artistic freedom. In fact, maybe uh, some, of the, some of the companies like Arcane Studios uh, are appearing to be um, uh, uh, like uh, uh, having too, you know, too great a freedom in order to create because ultimately the release recently of Redfall provided uh, us with a picture that Xbox were not keeping tabs on what was happening, on, uh, what was happening at the studio. And that, that itself uh, has been uh, of concern to me uh, because obviously we can have uh, serious problems with the quality product but nobody expected that there will be such flaws due to the high quality and standards that this studio had presented in the past. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what the responsibility is with Xbox, Microsoft or Bethesda, you know? Because obviously they came in with Bethesda, uh, the Arkin Studios. Anyway, that's just, I'm just uh, um, elaborating on some of the thoughts I've seen 
across the board really uh, with uh, uh, various uh, uh, platforms reddit and twitter included where people vented out their anger about some of these issues we've heard that electronic arts is saying goodbye to a couple of uh, c suite executives and they are going to be reorganizing the way they operate they're creating uh, the new company called ea entertainment so that is being realigned i should say that uh, uh, EA uh, 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 realigns into EA Sports and EA Entertainment divisions. So they're saying that the organization is going to be completely reorganized and they will operate under the different model. So they say that the steps will accelerate our business, drive growth and deliver long-term value for our people and players and our communities. And you know, without going into details, we'll see what happens next. Uh, a bit of a disappointing news for anyone who's been watching uh, the uh, uh, Summer Game Festival showcase events. One of the biggest games that I was excited about, and obviously a game that I was not familiar with prior to the festival, was Immortals of Avium. And apparently the game was to be released on July the 20th, so it's the day before my birthday. It looked amazing. They had the lead character introduced the game there um, on stage. And uh, it is now going to be delayed to August the 22nd. And they said there are some technical issues which they want to be tackling uh, they want the game to be fully polished so you know we'll have to wait another month no big deal really it's not like another year but uh, certainly slightly disappointing to people who are indeed very very interested in the title well I tell you the biggest bit of news I have here is twitch related will end our news with this uh, and let me just see what else we've got here uh, the uh, uh, one of my favorite developers don't not are asking people to join their harmony game development and they said that anybody can design certain characters and certain uh, sections of the key art and then forward it to don't not and then will be fully included so that's something novel this is highly interactive and that's really my sort of jazz i really like the idea that um the developer would want to involve their community and particularly the um, members of um, you know the section that is dedicated to graphic arts uh, to create something and you can contribute to the game and you will be credited and you will have some of that included so think about it you want to decorate someone's room and uh, you can provide posters and pictures and plants and I don't know, various other accessories and you design it and you send it to them and they'll bring it in so it's it's a new thing i've not seen that before it's for the first time i'm hearing that a company of that size is uh, offering this to the gaming community but definitely if you are one of those guys who's very talented with drawing or painting make sure you step in send something to them see what you get so if you're interested just go to my twitter i have got these tweets uh, on my profile and you'll be able to access all the information they said you can share it using hashtag dtiys and also hashtag harmony game and also you need to tag don't not entertainment so that they, they, they will not miss it basically they're asking for that to be sent to them directly through twitter right so you send it to their uh, don't not uh, twitter profile and um, they'll have a look at it blizzard's rod ferguson confirms that diablo 4 is going to require players to use a new character every single season well that is going to possibly of interest to some of you who are hammering the game at the moment and I'm not sure whether this will be very popular because people like creating certain stats on a character and for every single season using a new one would mean starting from scratch right so um, as games is it game straight up no it's games game rant actually as they said uh, this news might be upsetting to some Diablo 4 players are new to the Diablo franchise, especially since many have invested a significant amount of time in leveling up the characters already. Well, there's always that catch-22 somewhere, isn't there? And, uh, well, Rod Ferguson and Blizzard will have to seriously consider the responses that will be coming their way from today. So, uh, um, we've heard this week uh, that uh, the big discussion about allowing people to reach the level 100, I think it is, uh, on hardcore level, was contested because the early access people, in theory, were able to get there quicker 
guess what? Hardly anybody got there. So <laughs> they made it extremely difficult. And I think uh, the offer for uh, those people who were having early access was partly based with that notion in mind. And, um, you know, we are still having the issue that not many people are able to reach that level. But um, certainly, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what the community is going to say about this suggestion. Resident Evil 9 is rumoured to be in development and they say that it should look to Silent Hill for inspiration when it comes to a creative way to stand out. So let me see whether that's been confirmed. It's rumoured apparently and uh, they have been on a roll of late with several remasters and uh, remakes and you know the, the uh, um, the uh, uh, Resident Evil series is obviously moving from strength to strength and uh, progressing, I should say. And uh, uh, they are really now sort of anticipating the new installment, number nine. And um, they said that they will be taking the franchise based on the plot threads uh, set up in Resident Evil Village. And then they're quite curious to see what the new visuals are going to be like. Okay, this is all speculations, but we know that they're working on it, so we'll you know, wait and see. And we've heard today also that one of the biggest streamers on Twitch, Amaranth, uh, she basically uh, departed from Twitch overnight, and uh, uh, she has gone to the new platform called Kick. And I've got to tell you that I've not heard much about this platform before last week, where our friend Ali from New Zealand uh, told us about it here. So I researched it straight um, and I discovered that this is a, a new platform that apparently is offering a lot greater freedom to um, content creators and is a serious competitor to Twitch. So let's see how all of that unfolds because we have seen in the past that the big streamers would migrate to a new platform expecting that everything will be as good and then things just went south. And um, that's happened to the mixer, for instance, and you know what happened to uh, the team and everyone who participated. So, uh, Kick is offering huge revenue, the bigger streamers, and um, apparently it's been said that uh, XQC, uh, the streamer, um, uh, has been offered 100 million deal to stream through the platform. So just think about it, 100 million is, is um, no loose change. And I think Amaranth has engaged her agents and representatives to do exactly the same. And apparently they have agreed on a deal which indeed uh, is now being pursued. And uh, the fact is that uh, she had left Twitch. So if you are one of the fans, just make sure that you also migrate to Kick because there'll be there'll be no more Amaranth streams on this platform. And it's likely that some other people will be departing as Twitch is experiencing a huge number of technical problems. And uh, the other thing that is happening, similar to what we've seen here from our community members in response to Bungie, is they're beginning or they're trying to aggressively monetize certain things uh, which is not going to be accepted by many content creators. They had come up with some really completely insane conditions for 30 to 70 um, revenue share and that's for people who are sort of premium partners and they have some conditions which are just absolutely mind-boggling. I do not understand for the life of me as to why somebody would want to be doing any of that. Um, and you know that there are going to be other means through which people will generate revenue through the third party uh, platforms and various other companies that are offering services for tipping and money transactions and all sorts. It's ludicrous to think that they'll be able to retain this exclusively through these subscriptions. The whole system of subscriptions on, on Twitch is completely flawed and considering that every content creator who gets subscribers is paying 50% immediately to Twitch lose on subscription 50% straight away and there's all other costs attached to it plus taxes we are talking about less than 20% left to that individual so obviously if you're making a few million pounds this is this is a significant revenue but if you're making like 100 pounds you'll be ending with shillings and pence so really they need to uh, reevaluate the whole system of uh, monetization on Twitch and uh, as we move on as things progress there are other options and other ways and that is simply the way things are at the moment I'm not happy with the way Twitch is operating I've got to say I was absolutely horrified 
with uh, the recent updates and um, the um, problems that the update had caused to consoles in particular, PlayStation and Xbox in particular. Xbox Series X and S do not work with that Twitch integration. You can't stream at all. So that means at all. We had one stream last week uh, of Destiny 2 after the um, Tuesday reset on Series S. There was absolutely no broadcaster sound. It was absolutely abysmal. Picture was poor. It was choppy and, you know, unworkable. It's just binning. I don't understand as to why this is allowed to carry on. I don't know whether this changes if we're using um, various other... Um... You see, Bungie keeps doing this all the time. I've got it uh, connected to o Olay's and it goes to Lightstream. This should never happen. Destiny 1 is no longer properly maintained. Yesterday we've seen four people in a strike. We've seen uh, one... Uh, uh, um, uh, one of the adversaries coming in uh, having uh, the uh, game of tags attached to it you know like a minotaur coming to you and he is being called uh, well he he's having someone's game attack it just really bizarre anyway that's a story for another day uh, what I tried to tell you here is that switch will need to reevaluate the way they operate because aggressive monetizing whilst the uh, app is not performing on the technical front is certainly of very grave concern to everyone and you would have seen on reddit and twitter um, many thousands of complaints uh, related to the audio quality and problems that the twitch app has been causing so you know what can i tell you everybody is feeling the pressures of the cost of living crisis because everything is expensive for everyone and they on one hand they keep cost cutting um, reducing their human resources and on the other hand they are having a, a, a huge amount of pressure coming in from many more users who are using the services and you know it just, it just doesn't work you know it just like I was saying yesterday if you don't have the services which operate and you have like one building that's suitable for let's say habitation of six people and then you have their relatives coming in and then it's 12 people, and then some other people come in, it's 18 people, it's not gonna work, the whole building's gonna collapse, crumble, you know, be, it's just physically not possible, and that's what's happening to this company. So I'm not really particularly happy and uh, elated by what I'm seeing and hearing, but uh, on the other hand, we have got no other means to which we can stream. And uh, I mean, I will consider in the future streaming exclusively through PC, because uh, that will be freeing me up from some of the headaches that I've had so far, but then on the other hand, um, I'm still waiting for 5G network to be introduced in here with massive, massive speeds for that to be made possible because I'm not going to be doing it on a PC before we have um, you know, ultra-fast ultra, ultra fast fiber available uh, directly through whatever hub, whether it's a, it's a router or landline connection or anything else. And we're not having this in Britain. Less than 2% of the overall population of Britain are having access to fast fiber. That's ultra fast fiber. I think it's about less than 10% that are having access to fiber altogether, which is ridiculous, you know. But the 5G routers are going to overtake, I think, because with 5G network, the speeds are very fast. They mean, they, they, the speeds are not as good as uh, the uh, ultra fast fiber through um, the Y connection, but still, they will be a good substitute and they will not have the need to be rebuilding the infrastructure, which will be a lot less costly. Microsoft will have another. Uh, showcase event that will be dedicated to independent companies and that's independence attached to Xbox and that will be um, in July so let me just see what the dates are we already had one event based uh, uh, or, or not based but delivered as part of the um, Xbox and Summer Game Festival showcase and they said that this is going to be in July did they say the date yeah this will be running from 11th to 17th of July and they will be giving um, a selection of demos as well access to a selection of them um, for upcoming indie titles that will be coming to Xbox Series X and S and Xbox uh, One and uh, uh, it says here that the details on this year's Summer Game Festival demo event remain limited at present but expect more information on um, the, during the first week of July because the 11th is the date where that presentation indeed should be launched. Okay, so that's quite good. Let's put this date in our diary. And then we have um, 
the last bit of news for you today is about um, Elder Scrolls Online and I talked about it quite a bit not about the new DLC but generally the game and the developer I want to thank uh, um, our friend Valmo de Boy that's Valmo de Boy Valmo de Boy yeah Valmo de Boy hello Valmo de Boy how are you doing good to see you thank you for joining us and thank you <coughs> for becoming our <clears throat> our new very valued community member and uh, uh, our friend says that he had raided the channel with one viewers and also raiding the channel uh, uh, I'm coming I'm, I'm getting some information from stream elements and from Rainmaker so thanks very much for that I want to thank our friend for watching and for supporting the channel truly appreciate it and thank you for following and supporting all we do here always great to appreciate it great to see that the new members are coming in I take it that people enjoy the content and uh, the news and all we talk about the channel is not as busy as it used to be as yet because I've just resumed with my uh, streams uh, this is a new season of streams also delivered in a different format which may or may not be popular with some of the um, uh, community veterans and there's a lot more emphasis on talking and not playing the game straight away as well as being aware of social issues and supporting various charities so you know it's part and parcel of what we do here supporting others making sure that this forum is giving assistance to those who are in the need and that really includes literally everyone our community members destiny veterans people who are associated with the gaming community people who live in our neighborhood uh, our friends relatives associates workmates um, anyone really and this is what I've been doing here from the beginning it's just that it's a bit more emphasized it's a bit more pronounced we have that now up front and we have the campaign which is presently run as you can see and we are trying to raise the revenue for uh, Mind uh, the UK charity that helps people who are experiencing mental health problems and emotional difficulties so um, if you are interested you can just click on that link and then join and uh, support and uh, contribute in any way imaginable that doesn't mean you have to be donating you can just uh, ping messages you can tell others about it you can uh, talk about the charity and every single bit of assistance will help us tremendously so just remember that and also uh, the mind charity uh, is um, saving lives you know saving lives of people who are being affected by serious illness which is hugely debilitating and um, not just to themselves but also to their families and relatives and people who they work with and uh, um, because really mental illness certainly certain kinds of difficulties uh, affect everyone and uh, they're, they're you know extremely extremely um, deadly and unpleasant when it comes to social encounters and uh, um, doing different things and being able to concentrate to focus to work to read uh, so just remember that and remember that not everyone is as fortunate as the some of us who are spared and uh, sadly I read the report today it's on the BBC in fact and I talked about it last week incidentally if you remember the report indicates that during the, during the pandemic so we're talking about probably two years roughly 24 months uh, the number of people who had been suffering from anorexia and bulimia had massively increased so it was almost like 45 percent increase and this we're talking about people who actually have gone and asked for help so these are these are the people who are registered and who are already actively receiving treatment within the national health service or our charities and uh, that itself is simply a uh, um, uh, very very unpleasantly surprising on the other hand i can see as to why the numbers have increased because many people who are suffering from such difficulties um, will be impacted on the social front as well they will not be making friends contacts or keep themselves to themselves and these forums the for forums online particularly gaming forums that are very entertaining very sociable very chatty very supportive will always have to be open to people who are experiencing that sort of difficulty we've had quite a few coming in here during the pandemic but my heart sank when I read it because I thought hang on a minute there are some ways to which people can communicate but obviously it's the illness that's preventing people from doing so and that itself is uh, uh, the saddest part of it all so remember if you if, if you come across people who are suffering from such illnesses so if you know somebody who is under pressure emotionally make sure you help them and also make sure you point them to the right source in order to get help. In addition to that, you can support our campaign, which is 
um, providing funds and publicity for Mind UK, Mind Charity UK, and uh, we are doing everything we can to both uh, promote these services as well as support, raise the awareness, and then most importantly, generate funds, raise the issue in order to get people to donate. So remember that, very, very important. All right, so the last thing I want to tell you before we crack on with some games here is um, related to Necrom. We had seen a trailer for Necrom, the new DLC update for Elder Scrolls Online. And uh, um, the game's already been running for about nine years. And uh, I think from what I could gather, the new DLC, the update is going to be one of the biggest that we've seen so far. So um, the uh, latest edition is giving us uh, um, a first new class in four years. So, for instance, we'll have uh, two new zones expanding on the iconic Morrowin map from the way back in 2002. So that's quite interesting. It's, you know, it's 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 a very significant addition, and also what I've seen in one of the interviews recently, it wasn't part of any of uh, um, the uh, um, big showcase events from from Jeff Summer, Summer Game Festival. Uh, the developers talked about wanting to create an environment where people are not necessarily story bound. So they can come in at any time, play anything as they wish, and they can go back and forth in time. And that's great because I think Destiny is lacking this. In theory, we can come in at any time and try anything, but we are lacking that degree of narrative. We want to be able to access the missions, replay them at any time to become more familiar with the story. It's all well and fine doing the strikes and bits and pieces here and there, but we want to have the linear elements of the story for the newbies and for the oldies either to learn or to remind themselves of what this story of destiny is all about and uh, um, that's really necessary so i think elder scrolls from what i could gather are excelling in that compartment and uh, you know we need to see what uh, necron is going to bring us and they said um let you see, uh, Thomas Murphy is uh, the guy from, from the team as well as the combat lead, Brian Wheeler. They were talking about ins and outs of it and uh, they said that the new zones offer a mix of fresh and familiar. Some are instantly recognizable and uh, uh, some of those are fairly newish looking. Uh, they will be quite popular with the older Elder Scrolls fans, people played Morrowind and Oblivion over the years. And they said uh, when it came to defining what Apocrypha would be like in Elder Scrolls Online, the team was really sort of outdoing themselves because they really wanted to excel with everything. The sat that analyzed the brief glimpses of Herbius Mora's realm as it was in Skyrim, and then identified the visual themes um, that they knew they had to include, and that would be uh, the Ico Seas, the otherworldly Emerald Skies, and uh, they were just literally. Uh, going beyond these touchstones and creating the new environment full stop. So there's a new landmass, a new ecosystem, and similar to what one would see in Oblivion. Uh, and then they basically brought in all the themes of Skyrim's deception and just massively amplified them. So, you know, to summarize, there is a lot of new content coming in with Necron, and I think we are definitely very excited to experience it in that format. I told you yesterday that I will be uh, playing Elder Scrolls Online quite a bit from now, because I'm curious to compare. I've had lots of our uh, friends here from the Destiny community saying they really like the ideas and concept that's been observed. Not many of them played Elder Scrolls because they're quite a different type of game, uh, but I will be um, definitely exploring it. I'm quite curious to see you know, Bungie and Xenomax, and let's see. I played it initially when they launched the game, and I thought it was quite different to what I had with Elder Scrolls series on Xbox and PlayStation, and that's um, uh, Skyrim, Oblivion, and Mind. Um, but they are trying to integrate everything. So if we are considering how Bungie are integrating Destiny One and Destiny Two, this would be a very, very good comparative study. I mean, don't forget uh, uh, Xenomax. Uh, 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 is fully involved with all aspects of the story, but big map, the different sections, different characters, different chapters. Um, because any time I've gone in, as soon as I walk through a plane, I would have at least half a dozen people popping and saying, "Hello, do you want to join our clan? Do you want to this? Do you want to?" So it was, uh, it was a lot more interactive, and that instantly interactive to what I've seen in Destiny overall. And uh, um, the reason I've gone down the route of doing Destiny initially here on the channel and I'd selected it as my main backbone game of everything we do here was to do with 
other elements of this community and one of those which I thought was very important was that we've had in the sequel launched uh, the uh, uh, Destiny 2 game and many people had gone down the route of playing it but they would always come back to Destiny 1 category on Twitch in order to explore whatever was left there in the original game so it, it gave us a, a big pass in traffic and the community was very very uh, supportive very friendly very uh, educational whilst I thought well I've not played it long enough to say uh, a lot of people in Elder Scrolls were quite keen on helping and joining forces in order to progress in the game and I thought with Destiny my first time experience was that others were coming here to help me to progress and that felt like properly educational for everyone who was watching because you know all the guys who are not coming in here to watch us live they would simply um, then learn from our experiences and it would be like like a, a proper educational content all right sorry I talked a lot about the news and all that's been going on in the industry uh, <clears throat> as you've seen just to summarize two big events are PlayStation celebrations and Steam Festival and these ones are definitely most highly recommended to everyone. Explore the both and if you're a cross-platform gamer, if you have the consoles and a PC or laptop, make sure you enter have a look. Even if you're having a, um, a tablet, <clears throat> you know, you won't be able to download uh, these games and play them on, on, on your tablet, but you can just have a look at the trailers and you can uh, get a flavor of what these games are like because they're monitoring the access of rule and you'll be helping both the publishers and the developers to carry on and um, I'm truly delighted to get such events because they're offering us so many different things for free evidently sooner or later we'll have to buy certain games and uh, certain elements but adds, it's just an opportunity that was never ever present in the past and uh, uh, I'm really truly delighted that I actually can take part and uh, we can be um, Riping the rewards, we can have the benefits. Uh, one of which is trying out the games to find out what they're like without any cost. You know, you get the flavor. You can come in at any time, and uh, uh, you know, you you will be uh, uh, fully involved with everything that is offered, with the betas, with demos, with alphas. You become part and parcel of that process of actually creating a game, as it's been the case already with several titles. And today we've heard from Don't Nod, uh, they they want people to draw and produce content that will be released within the game evidently it will be selected they will be very careful with what what is being introduced uh, but certainly that will be um, very much appreciated uh, and i think it will provide a, a massive new opportunity for everyone who is involved with industry and uh, um, somebody who wants to be i guess having a, a stepping stone in order to become fully integrated within some of those uh, um, game development uh, game developers so let me think what else do i have here a couple of questions from our community members as well just remembered i have some questions related to our streams so first of all let me just see i've got something that i need to double check before we crack on just bear with us a second Yeah, I do apologize. I just had to double check something. I had some messages coming in. Right. I'm really interested to see that people are reading um, the information on Twitter and Instagram and picking up on that hashtag Gamers for Mental Health because I had a message from somebody who is not a member of our community. They picked it up on Twitter again. They asked the question, are you going to stream any games which actually are related to mental health? This is a fantastic question. Thank you for asking this. There are games that are related to mental health, absolutely. And we are going to be doing some of these within special sessions, which will be delivered as part and parcel of our uh, fundraising campaign <coughs> for, our, for, for various charities. <clears throat> uh, if, if you're asking, excuse me, I need to, need to drink something, excuse me. Um, if if you are um, considering what games uh, uh, may be the best representation, there's quite a variety. But I think the ones that are very popular and the ones that will be certainly uh, embraced by any community um, are uh, Senua, which is Hellblade, 
that I think it's a perfect embodiment of what it's like when somebody becomes seriously disturbed. And then there is uh, uh, Life is Strange that is tackling with a variety of different um, mental health issues that are plaguing uh, people who are going to high school. So I think these two games, as well as actually Life is Strange, the recent one, uh, uh, which can be also included, I've got it both on PlayStation and uh, Xbox. These are the games that I think would be a perfect embodiment of um, uh, what it's like to be suffering from certain amounts of uh, uh, emotional difficulty or indeed from a major mental health issue uh, or suffering from a certain health condition. And they would be uh, a very, very good description of what this is like and a very good titles for people to be fully engaged with. So thank you for the question and I will certainly consider it. I think we'll run it on weekends outside of our Destiny streams and uh, uh, you know we'll try to get people in. Maybe I need to pu publish a couple of uh, um, articles on my blog in order to draw a bit more attention, in order to um, uh, raise the profile and uh, um, I guess align the titles with what we are doing which is raising funds for um, <clears throat> the Mind Charity in Britain. <clears throat> it's again so hot in here, you know. Uh, my voice is affected by this heat and uh, it's just humidity. Unfortunately, yet again, after all that rain uh, from two nights ago, um, from five o'clock in the morning, there was this sun hitting the building where I live and it's it's again roasting hot and you know, it's just really, really difficult. I, I've got to say, I do not remember uh, this sort of heat in this area or affecting the building where I live ever since I came here which was already eight years ago and um, what can I do you just have to uh, green and bear it and then carry on and wait until it gets a bit cooler I thought last night with that rain we would get a bit of a refresher but nothing it's gone back to uh, very very hot weather outside and it's hot and humid and stuffy and unpleasant and that's that's what it is anyway coming back to uh, um what I said. I want to thank our friend for sending us the uh, question about hashtag and asking about this game. So I think probably Hellblade is the best one, the best representation. And that's certainly my own personal view because I play obviously lots of games and it does represent that the best. Uh, and then we have Life is Strange. If you think of any other titles, um, you can you can ping you know the titles to us you can send them uh, through Twitter Instagram or here on Twitch and I'll obviously consider them and also I think I would quite like a community forum run on weekends where we get quite a few people to come in to watch and talk so it's not just about playing the game it's also about communicating um, so you know it's it's definitely uh, something I would massively support uh, the other person asked about Twitch they said how are you finding Twitch today nowadays compared to the way it was well I guess uh, that's the question I already answered uh, earlier today when I was talking about the new rules and uh, I forgot actually to mention I just remembered I didn't tell you this I need to tell you this it's, it's, it's a very significant thing to do with Twitch and streaming and I forgot to mention it because I said we're going to talk about this right at the end and then I, I forgot it uh, it's a big thing I received first thing today in fact they pinged it to me uh, uh, um, I received it by email and it's been reported later uh, on Twitter and uh, um, Instagram and elsewhere. Twitch is introducing new labels to classify mature content. And this is going to be extremely strict, uh, I guess, in view of the complaints that we all had been launching at Twitch, that the forums are not properly moderated, that we have people who are very abusive and doing you know, things which are completely uh, inappropriate for online forums. They have introduced this classification and that's similar to what you have for films and television series and they would want every single streamer to be classifying these streams before the launch but I'm asking a question like fine that can be done easily on a PC but on consoles you can't do that because the console does not have the um, the tab where you can basically provide that sort of information we have it on uh, Twitch settings um, and that is to be applied across the board for any stream that we do. So for instance, my streams are considered to be family friendly and they are not really classified as mature and I prohibit any form of mature 
uh, discussions in here anything that is using swear words obscenities um, ranting about politics etc etc you know it, it's it's just a family friendly channel and that's fine for me I have no issues but they've come up with certain conditions and I was reading this today um, very very specific issues like for instance if you're a streamer and just chatting what is it that you can be displaying to an audience um, at any time and I have quite a few um, associates and friends who do cosplay and you know they, they, they're being dressed in a way which is very revealing and they expose certain parts of their body and everything they will have a serious problem because algorithm and AI are going to be monitoring how they're appearing on video and they could be facing very serious restrictions, bans and everything else and it's it, it, the new the, the new guidelines to me sound very similar to what we had a couple of weeks ago where they wanted to uh, uh, introduce all the restrictions and then everyone rebelled and they had to retract the whole thing overnight this this to me sounds very similar because basically um, the labels which they're talking about are mature rated games sexual themes drugs intoxication or excessive tobacco use violent or and graphic depictions significant profanity or vulgarity and gambling so they're saying Twitch is not changing its community guidelines in any way in terms of allowing this sort of content all of that is allowed it just needs to be labeled correctly so when people are accessing it they will know exactly what they're likely to see um, you know it, it well and fine sounds like a good idea but the question is how is this going to be made workable how is, how is this going to work on a practical level because I don't see that there are going to be restrictions or maybe there will be I don't know if somebody wants to label the stream as 18 and somebody's accessing and they they had uh, the date uh, on the registration that indicated well the vast majority of children will not put their proper date of birth uh, through registration I can assure you because they'll know that they'll, they'll not be able to access any content so you know it's it's a good idea on paper but whether it will work uh, is 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 uh, a different matter and then also um, they said that uh, this is in view of their changes that, that applied in November with which updated the measures to prevent child abuse and grooming on the platform well I think what they've applied is insufficient uh, you know it's as simple as that because I keep seeing many people doing it off their mobile phones and uh, um, there are participants and broadcasters who actually should not be broadcasting due to the age restrictions and other conditions and nobody is checking this maybe maybe in the future if they introduce some incredibly powerful very sophisticated very uh, um, specific type of ai uh, algorithm or anything else uh, maybe maybe everything will work i don't know but on the other hand i can tell you for lots of the streamers who are kind of uh, not really um, following the rules it could be a, a, a very very uh, nasty day out because you know the way it works on YouTube you suddenly get this ban restriction suspension and the only way you can lift it is by going to court which is in the US and that's the only way you can do it you need to get your barrister you need to pay a few thousand pounds uh, up front in order to go to court in the US and contest it otherwise they will do nothing and then, for, you know, uh, for people who are monetizing or, or building their channel in order to have earnings, this is a huge shock. And, uh, you know, they'll try to open another one. And anyway, that, I'm just talking aloud. I think uh, some of these ideas appear to be quite uh, interesting on paper. But when it comes to the actual execution, practically, there are difficulties that certainly um, appear. And I'm not convinced that this is all going to work. I can just see that it will cause a huge point of contention amongst many participants. So that includes the viewers as well, because you know the viewers want to be accessing certain content, and they have the benefit of being able to access straight away. So um, I'm not sure how it's going to work. Also, probably the most controversial part of it is gambling, because obviously the new guidelines in place since October last year uh, are um, there to prohibit streaming of unlicensed gambling sites. So, I mean, how about somebody who's actually gambling live, not playing cards? How about that? It's not clearly specified. They're prohibiting somebody streaming it through the PC, uh, you know, clicking basically and providing what's on a browser indicating that you have some gambling sites in there. I don't know. It, it just, just seems ridiculous. And I also think these private companies, they will need to have major departments 
we talk about departments that really are staffed by hundreds of people, that will get their heads together and then examine all these ins and outs of um, the whole of that uh, online world of communication because there are so many different issues to consider. You know, if you don't have such teams working on it, nothing will work. And I think in, in, in due course, this may well be created as a sort of a statutory requirement because we've seen that the companies like Facebook and Twitter, they have not done enough, Google is there as well, uh, to prevent uh, different types of activities that are hugely damaging to many people, to the world. Um, they've done nothing. They're not interested in, 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 in uh, creating systems that will be preventing users from accessing those platforms because preventing them from using the platforms would mean the drop on the numbers and the drop on the numbers will mean problems with the shareholders and the investors. So it's a knock-on effect. On one hand, you are careful and you're consider considering all issues related to safety, but then you are ruining the numbers and the numbers are what they are interested in. So, you know, I'm not hopeful. Anyway, so that's come out today. And let me see, is there anything else on this? Um, basically, Eurogamer just anecdotally mentioned it. It's just saying a few things like, the new labels are maturated themes, sexual themes, drugs, intoxication, violent graphic depictions, significant profanity, vulgarity, gambling. But what I had from Twitch was very lengthy. It was like very extensive. And that's obviously directed at me as a content creator. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's troubling. I don't know what people think about this, but uh, um, I, I'd be curious to hear from, from our friends. Um, I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are on the whole thing. Because at the end of the day, uh, we need to be um, getting together. We need to be more united as uh, five online forums, and we need to be giving our views. Uh, either nothing's going to be done, or if uh, the governments get their act together and they start imposing serious, uh, very strict laws upon these companies, uh, then those companies will simply, you know, come up with a hatchet and there are going to be problems. I mean, I don't experience any problems here on my channel, but I watch other people's broadcasts and I'm pretty well versed in what other people do within the community. And albeit we have fantastic variety of things on offer, I do think there are lots of people who are abusing the platform in order to deliver the content which is not suitable in order to aggressively monetize. So that is what needs to be tackled, right? Anyway. I'm having a headache after all of this. Honestly, too many issues to be concerned about and uh, not that happy with Twitch at the moment. And I'm coming back to our friend who asked, what do you think of Twitch as it stands today? Well, I don't think I answered the question by this rant. But <laughs> I think I'll try to be uh, uh, as, as explicit or as... Uh, um, brief as possible in my description. I mean, first of all, Twitch is a platform that's been around, well, it's not the longest, obviously YouTube was there before them, uh, but the longest in terms of the overall system, the integration of all the services that were made possible for gamers to be doing streams. And as such, it has a tremendous value, but at the end of the day, it's all well and fine to be having that fantastic value, but at the end of the day, they have got to be employing many enough people to do the maintenance, to do the necessary works for everything to be given as it should. I have experienced many technical issues with Twitch of late. And also what worries me is this aggressive monetization that keeps being thrown at the content creators. Um, it's just ridiculous because at the end of the day, what you see is, you know when you watch the old Disney cartoons, you get that dollar sign at the front of somebody's eyes. So as they see a dollar sign, they start jumping. Uh, just wrong. You know, there's some degree of modesty, some degree of uh, um, reason needs to be applied because everybody at the moment is experiencing huge financial pressures. If you start tightening the screws on everyone, you will lose the business. People will just bail. It's not difficult. One click means delete, delete, you know, unfollow, depart, and that's it. You don't come back again. Um, Instagram, in fact, prevented, I don't know why you know that. Instagram prevented every single subscriber from deleting large number of contacts at once. 
So for instance, as a streamer, I get hundreds and hundreds of uh, requests that come in every single day, probably through the bots or whatever is out there that, that, that creates them, for people who want me to follow them. Right? So it looks like they'll follow me and they follow me and they want me sort of follow to follow sort of situation. But guess what? I click on follow and as soon as I clicked on following them, they actually unfollow me. So it obviously automates it. And you get that in draws, loads of them. So for instance, on my um, uh, Instagram, I have quite a number of people who I follow who come in the category of cosplay, for instance, because lots of them keep coming every single day. You know, quite quite interested to see how they rebuild the content. It's very different to what I do. It's, it's not related at all. And uh, they come in huge numbers. So if I wanted to delete, let's say, 20 of them at once, and just click delete, 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 I get messages coming from Instagram saying, you're not allowed to be deleting that many at this time, because they assume that I'm like a bot. Do you see what I mean? They're preventing me from actually reducing the numbers, and uh, therefore the numbers are persisting. They're staying exactly as they are. I want to reduce the numbers because there are lots of people there who I do not want to have on my uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, following list, but I can't do that. I can do them one by one. So think about it. If you have like 2,000 people who've gone in like this, it'll take you 2,000 days, or maybe 1,000 days, maybe 500 days, for you to be able to reduce. Uh, and you're not going to be able to do that manually if you want to delete 10 of them at the same time. So you can see the company is resisting any form of mediation, any form of safety that is being introduced by uh, an individual who is running a particular profile because they're worried about the the the, the number the the, uh, the numbers dropping also the other thing that annoys me i always report people who i find to be inappropriate and i've seen today i don't really familiar with paul tazzy paul tazzy is a, a, a person who writes uh, on video games for forbes and uh, he basically had um, uh, he, he, he took a photograph of Elon Musk's statement that indicated what he is now applying to Twitter as a, another safety procedure. But it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And obviously, Tazi questioned this and he said, well, this is just you know beyond understanding. I, if, if I didn't think this was uh, uh, serious, I'd laugh. Twitter for the vast majority of those reports that you send in will tell you that these guys have not broken the rules and they had clearly broken rules particularly when it came to the use of certain language which is offensive defamatory you know what can i tell you so i'm not happy to answer the question that actually came to us from our from one of our uh, uh well came from twitter in fact i'm not sure whether this person is our community member or not I'm not that happy with the way Twitch is running their affairs at the moment. I think there have been lots of negative bad things applied. It's not performing technically. It's not delivering for consoles. I can certainly tell you that. It's causing lots of audio and video problems. Xbox Series X and S are very badly affected. It's not possible to stream off them at all at present. I'm not sure what other people do who are using consoles, um, the Xbox consoles for the streams. And I have not seen any appropriate and useful information on that either it was just all about rants and all all about um, the uh, dissatisfaction that people have had and generally i think the other side of that is aggressive monetization and uh, uh, not respecting uh, the content creators well enough content creators generally irrespective of the content they could do anything you just think about somebody who's walking the streets of, of the town and doing sightseeing and presenting themselves. Those people work extremely hard in order to create those streams. First of all, they need to invest in the tech in order to be able to do it. What they pay the greatest revenue for is usually either the gadget, i.e. very expensive mobile phone, or additional accessories, and the internet connection. It costs, you know, it's very expensive. The second thing is, they spend a lot of time preparing these streams. Even if it looks like they've done nothing, they still have to prepare. Think of the girls who are doing cosplay. Think about what they need to do for that. They need to prepare costumes. They need to do makeup. So it's every single time. And I think that, that policy, which is a cutthroat policy of just taking and taking and taking, is definitely um, wrong. 
it is not appreciating the uh, um, uh, the content creators. Uh, it is seen as very negative, and it's just accelerating. At the end of the day, why wouldn't they consider offering a subscription? If you asked people to pay anything from five to ten dollars, or pounds, or euros, to be an integral member of that community, and that would resolve the problem. Obviously, you've got to pay that. It's not for free. But you still will be then raising the revenue for the company and you don't have to be then creating a situation where everybody feels um, aggressively monetized and hugely disrespected because at the end of the day if somebody has due to the twitch streams good sponsorship deals with big companies and they're making a huge amount of money elsewhere uh, through uh, those deals they don't actually need twitch you know it's 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 the fact, and this is what Twitch is at the moment trying to um, cut down on, because there are more and more people coming in who are getting the deals due to the high quality content, and they are indeed um, then bypassing the systems that Twitch have in order to generate revenue for themselves. I think the idea of subscriptions on Twitch will disappear. I think this will be just completely obsolete in no time, um, because you are going to be able to get donations and um, tips through other sources which are not based on Twitch. If you have a good community and if you're providing high quality content and you're carrying on a long period of time on the regular basis with consistency, with appreciation of your community, with being highly interactive, you are going to be able to do that. So, you know, um, these are my thoughts on Twitch, really, and I thank uh, our friends for sending us these questions. One was about uh, um, mental health and what games represent it, and we, uh, are we going to be having such games here as we are obviously running this hashtag and supporting uh, the charities that work with people experiencing mental health issues? Uh, the answer to that was, of course, yes, and we all will schedule special events. And then the other question was about Twitch, and I've talked about it quite a bit here, and uh, it's interesting. I think people picked up uh, on my dissatisfaction through betas and other things we've done during the last couple of weeks. Um, and they're just voicing, they're voicing the concern and uh, asking me for a few more thoughts because they've seen that the the, um, the satisfaction has been mounting not just in these quarters but uh, um, elsewhere through Reddit and Twitter and uh, other participants and gamers who are very, very unhappy with the way things are. At the end of the day, you know, if there are competitors like Kick emerging, they offer something which is novel, interesting, exciting. Um, there could be problems for the company, but at the end of the day, you know, like Microsoft's and Apple's of this world, if they have longevity, they have that tradition, they have that history, they have the core membership, and I guess the difference is they don't have the budget compared to these uh, heavyweights in order to dominate the global markets. But, you know, the possibilities remain open. That's all I want to say. We'll, we'll see how things are going to be in due course. So, um, all right, my friends, I think now we are going to be cracking on with some Destiny gameplay. Hope you, um, I'm not so enjoyed, but I hope you uh, find some of my comments interesting. I think today I'm, I'm in Mr. Rant mode, and that's probably to do with <laughs> those new Twitch rules, which in fact do not affect me at all. They have got no bearing on the channel whatsoever, but they will do so upon many other people. So you could see how well aware of these issues I am, because they're not affecting me at all, but I know that other people are going to be affected, and that there are going to be problems. Um, I, I feel that uh, um, the hard work that lots of content creators are putting into the Twitch streams has got to be respected and rewarded one way or the other. And obviously those people will find a way, but uh, um, the people who are affected the most are small streamers and those who are kind of working hard trying to create something that will be monetized and um, it doesn't simply work and uh, you know it's it's just I feel that there is a, a lot of injustice out there that perhaps it's not really based on anyone's individual opinions it's the systems that create it you know the way the systems work and the way they sort of generate uh, certain kinds of uh, um, participants and interactions but th there needs to be a lot more time effort and human resources invested into this in order to prevent any further catastrophes because i can see many problems emerging um in due course and uh, i would be very sorry to say that uh, twitch as a platform collapsed you know 
I mean, we've seen with many other massive companies who were successfully running their businesses for quite some time that there came a liability, then a threat, and then there came the crunch. And that's just the way it is because they're based on the investment and the capital. But there needs to be a lot more uh, forward thinking uh, about business and how the things are being monetized on Twitch overall. Because the way I see it is, if you look at the stats, we're talking about a tiny, tiny number. So less than 1% of those people overall globally who stream on Twitch and actually have some degree of profitability. It's just less than 1%. It's like maybe half percent or something like that. And then within that half percent, you'll get the big streamers, but they're just very few. The fact is, there aren't that many big streamers. You know, it doesn't doesn't matter how many uh, followers or subscribers they manage to generate uh, uh, through questionable means. Um, that's just a fact. Because this is a new medium. You know, this is new. I think in ten years, think about ten years ago. Think about twenty thirteen. Was there Twitch? There wasn't. Were there any online gaming communities of streamers and are pe were people doing everything we're doing today? They were not. So what does that tell you? In 10 years, world changed. So think of 2033, maybe a completely different market, regulated, many more people involved, you know, maybe that television and film companies will be fully involved because their services are suffering as a collateral of this sort of development. The form of communication that we have here with video gaming is the most powerful one on the planet and it's growing. You know, there are many more people joining forces, there are many more gamers coming in, there are many more people doing these kinds of things. And uh, at the end of the day, I can just see the medium going from strength to strength, progressing forward rapidly, accelerating. Um, you need to look further, but this stream, if you go back to the beginning of the stream, what I talked about. PlayStation Plus Festival and uh, Steam Festival. Think about it. All that is on offer, the sheer quantity, all of that's been created in the last 10 years or even less. It's a fantastic achievement. It's, 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 it's mind-boggling. I can't really, I mean, I can only compare it with the um, development of uh, film in um, America at a certain stage of the last century. So at first it had a major boost from about 20, uh, 1916 to 1920 where they basically industrialized the whole sector and they had a huge number of uh, film studios, directors, actors and people involved. And then there was another one as they invented sound that was from about 29 to 33. Um, but the studios became big, powerful uh, and indeed um, uh, the entities that dominated the global markets uh, in view of uh, the First World War. So, you know, it's very similar because we are seeing now massive expansion with lots of people involved and we see the the uh, um, the effects that uh, uh, these uh, um, developments are having on global communities of gamers and people who use social networking in general. I mean, I've seen uh, recently uh, lots of people had decided to uh, migrate from um, Facebook uh, to gaming forums because they found Facebook to be no longer as attractive or as interactive whilst with the gaming forums. If you are a member of a certain community, you're a regular, you're a viewer, you're a participant, you always meet the same people every single day at the same time. And what better fun can there be? You know, it replaces what we had in the past going to a pub or to cinema or to theatre, but it's global. People can be from anywhere. And at the end of the day, contrary, contrary to the populist belief and contrary to what media tell you, almost every single person is always very curious about what other people are like who live in other parts of the world. Right? So you enjoy that. You know what your neighbours are like, but you want to meet somebody from some other country. You want to meet somebody who is totally different. You want to find out what they're like. And this video gaming forums are giving you that opportunity. In addition to that, they bring people in to follow the same interest, which is their passion for video gaming, for talking, for interacting, for meeting others, for discussing things, for doing the battles, for resolving issues within the games themselves. You know, it's the kind of multitude of different types of involvements and the interactions that follow. So it's absolutely astonishing. Anyway, I'm not tired of talking. I need to now crack on with gaming. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll do some admin. Look at this. What is going on? A lost picture. 
you got a picture in there. I don't know what's probably my cable in here. Uh, I have everything connected uh, by wire. You know, I don't use Wi-Fi or anything like that. Uh, and also my controllers are connected to consoles uh, with uh, wire connections because at the end of the day, this gives uh, the very best connectivity and signal. All right. So what do we do? What do we do today? Well, we'll do everything as usual. We'll go down the route of choosing a hunter. Then we'll go to uh, the tower. we do some admin. Let's see how many people are destiny to their Twitch. Let me see. Nine viewers. Well, that's not very many, is it? Okay. We'll go to the tower. If you are a newbie, if you're joining our community for the first time, you may ask, well, why is he going to the tower all the time? Well, the answer is very simple. We need to do some admin first. We need to get on with um, the collectibles, and then we need to sort out our kit. We need to get rid of unnecessary items, get ready for another battle, and then we crack on. Today is, what is it, Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Lost track of time. It is indeed. I do apologize uh, about these banging noises which keep bothering me every single day. Um, we have major works done here at the property which are infinite and never ending and they've been going on for several months. And uh, I live in a uh, historic property so uh, there's always, always uh, the need for lots of maintenance but you'll hear and all sorts and uh, absolutely nothing I could do about this but it's really interfering with everything I do. Fortunately it's not done at night so I don't suffer really with my uh, sleep or anything. and. Uh, let me see what we got here. Oh, we'll get rid of that. We don't really need any of this raid we've got in the vault. I know that. We'll get rid of it. And then there is. Look at this. Tower watch, tower watch. Belly close. Wait a minute. Bellicos? We don't need Bellicos. We don't need Tower Watch. We don't need Tower Watch. We've got several Tower Watch shells. Um, Engram? Engram. Okay. Going to sort out his Engrams. Yet more noise coming my way. Because of some drilling into my head. Always interesting. But I don't know we're kicking up much fuss because you know the works are necessary. Heritage properties, you know, historic properties they require a lot of attention. And unless done properly then that could dilapidate. You don't want to see. So what did I get in here? Let's see. The tale told. That's quite nice. I like that. And in a moment. Oh yeah, there is Cine Lamprey. We do not want it. And then we have another cloak which we also do not want okay and then we'll have um, we won't have anything we just need to get rid of everything which is unnecessary in that uh,
Oh, that's Emite root. Let's see what this is like. Hang on, preview. What is that like? I quite like that. That's good fun. Yeah, we'll 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 take that. Hang on. Burnt mash marshmallow. Burnt marshmallow. Right. So what have we got there? Emotes. Please, blowing a kiss, crane kick. Hmm. Hi. Time to put some of them in the vault, by the looks of it, don't you think? And then get some new ones, because that root is quite funny. I quite like it. School. Okay, score, clap, tantrum. Okay, that's not too bad either. It'd be hard to uh, howl. Actually, I don't like howl much. So we'll just go back and pick up, um, pick up this one. I'm not keen on these very bright red or bright yellow shaders that don't really appeal to me, got to admit. This is not bad, I like that. Gold spiral. That's not too bad either. Today's cutting something again, so like literally so noisy. Well, my friends, it's hard to tell, really, isn't it? Because every one of these is quite beautiful and giving us... You see, it doesn't like that one too much, I've got to admit. Red doesn't really appeal to me too much in here. But then it's sort of blending in so perfectly with the rest of the uh, outfit. Uh, this one can go in, actually. Where was this one? What's this one? I can't this one, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. This one. Now I forget which one it was. Blast of all. Blast of all. Okay, that one.